Well, good evening and welcome uh, to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. We're going to be live on Facebook for our uh, evening service this Sunday night. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, just a few announcements before we get going. First of all, if this is the first time you found us, we're an evangelical church and we're based in Chester, uh, in Backford. Uh, you can join with us live on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, we are very glad to have people, visitors, whoever, yeah, we're not foresee about who comes. Um, you can also join with us on a Sunday evening, as in now, 8 o'clock. Or on a Wednesday night, we're on Facebook also on, at 7.30. And recently, we had um, somebody join with us in our home while we were doing the online broadcast and I said uh, this morning when we were in church that anyone else could join as well so now there might be a couple of people joining us on, some, on the Wednesday night at our house um, so we extend that invitation uh, if you would like to join us live as well as online uh, or instead of online uh, you would be welcome to come and, and, and be with us in our house uh, while we do our Bible study because then it's more of a live audience uh, so um, that's something to be praying about also things to be praying about um, as Christmas comes up we would like on the 19th of December to do a, a, a fellowship lunch if you would uh, be available and you would like to come to our church uh, the idea is everyone brings something uh, that is enough to feed themselves and possibly someone else uh, it will be a Christmas themed fellowship lunch there may need to be a little bit of coordination so that everybody brings stuffing but um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, on that nearer the time if you'd like to be part of that please get in touch with us um, also on that day, uh, the plan would be for us to, after the fellowship lunch, to maybe go into the village of Backford and sing either on the green outside the, uh, the houses in the village centre or on the green outside Backford Hall, uh, one of the two, um, and we would invite the village to come and sing carols with us, uh, if you'd like to be part of that singing in the open air that would be great also on that day we are planning um, possibly uh, depending on um, the take up uh, to possibly do a, 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 a short drama uh, monologues if you would like to be part of that uh, if you would like to be involved with that uh, speak to my wife <coughs> What's happened this year is we're uh, we're doing our school play as always. Uh, we're doing it slightly differently this year, um, and with that inspiration, my wife uh, has decided. Well, we could also do an adult play. Funnily enough, somebody else in our church suggested the same idea. Uh, we could do an adult play. And I thought, well, it's a bit crazy, but actually, not. yeah, well, why not? Uh, so this is the thing. If you'd like to be involved with that. Um, Come and speak to us again. Uh, it wouldn't be a lot of learning lines. You'd be given a, a, a passage, possibly to memorise, or possibly even to read out on the night if you don't want to memorise it or you can't, you have trouble with that. You're not expected to be in con costume. You're not expected to interact with someone else and wait for cues. And uh, So it would be very low key, very simple. If you'd like to be involved with that, speak to us um, if we don't get enough take up we might not do it but um, uh, let's pray let's see what God does uh, in the meantime join us um, you can also find us as well on uh, GGE Church GGE Church at uh, .co.uk um, that's uh, our website and also uh, on YouTube at Greater Grace Evangelical Church uh, come and find us there also uh, subscribe and get other information if you'd like to email us it's greater grace 4 that's the number 4 Chester 
how to live uk so um yeah uh, let's do this let's pray and we'll give this time to the the lord and then we will um read the scripture and see what god does with tonight's uh, time we are open to him uh, i don't have anything planned i say this every week yeah i don't really have anything planned but i just want to be available to what god wants to do so let's do this let's pray and see what happens <coughs> heavenly father we thank you lord we worship you tonight and we just give you the glory we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness thank you for the day that we've had thank you for each one each one that was out this morning those that were together with us those that were watching online lord just minister life lord we pray <coughs> We think of those who couldn't be with us as well, Lord. Uh, and we pray for those that are sick and suffering, uh, particularly for Janice at this time, Lord. And we know that um, she's not being moved to the Liverpool Hospital uh, today. So we pray, Lord, that you would have that under your control, mm -hmm. that you would heal her enough um, for her to be moved, for the procedures to go ahead so that she could be uh, back to full health out of hospital as well lord <coughs> cover there we pray protect each one lord we ask as well uh, minister your life lord we we pray now use this time for your glory's sake lord we ask touch others that need your touch as well tonight uh, we think of joe's father as well lord he's been in the hospital uh, and lord we pray for divine intervention in that situation Lord, because um, she can't be with him her mother can't be there they can't uh, they can't visit they can't have access he has uh, parkinson's disease and dementia and, uh, and as well as uh, kidney problems at the moment or we pray that there, there would be mercy we pray that he would get the the care that he he needs and we pray for your divine mercy in that situation that those that he knows those that he is familiar with those that will uh, keep his mind alive uh, if they cannot be there Lord we pray that you would uh, you would raise someone else up who's a believer mm -hmm. to be with him to stimulate and care for him mm -hmm. and encourage and give peace of mind to him Joe and her mother and each one, Lord, involved, fill as well, Lord, and just really cover now, Lord, at this season, protect, uh, add your life, Lord, we pray. Uh, we give each situation into your hands, of the prophet Tom hand as well, mm -hmm. Shirley, for Joyce Morley, for Richard Gilzean, many of the people that have had uh, health issues at this season. Uh, Lord, we pray that you minister life and uh, come through for Jane as well, Lord, and for uh, others as well. Uh, really touch this season now. Guide us, Lord, we ask. Minister your life, Lord. Come through for us as your people, Lord, as we trust you. As we open uh, our hearts to you, Lord, tonight. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. We don't know your plan. Uh, but we trust you. We love you. We look to you. We seek your face, Lord. Guide us, Lord, with your eye. And anoint with your Holy Spirit now. As we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> okay, so... We'll look at Deuteronomy chapter 10. We read a couple of verses this morning. Which, uh, very slow to uh, come up. Uh, 
out already just in case. Should come up on the screen. Seventeen. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love you therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. Wow. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, this this evening for your word, your truth, your encouragement, your life, your power. Speak to us tonight, Lord, we pray, and use this time. Uh, we have no plans for this time other than listening to your voice, Lord. We ask that you fill us with your spirit and anoint, and show us the things that are on your heart tonight, Lord. Minister life, we pray and use this time for your glory's sake speak to hearts and anoint by your Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen well this morning we were thinking on these uh, these thoughts we were talking about the great God um, who surprises us and who does the impossible uh, is anything too hard for the Lord uh, we were talking also about uh, the God who actually often makes things more difficult so that he can come through in more miraculous ways uh, there are countless examples of that in, in the Bible we looked at various ones like uh, Abraham and Sarah uh, we looked at uh, Gideon we looked at Elijah on Mount Carmel uh, we looked at Lazarus uh, being raised from the dead by Jesus in many of these situations God actually made the situation worse before it got better so you have a bad situation you have a, a, a situation that looks unlikely but then God says no it's actually going to be completely impossible completely impossible I'll take away any shred of hope that you have that this thing would happen or that things would go the way that you expect but I'm going to do it and when I do it it will be a miracle that's the God that we have that's the God who we we serve a, a God who is the God of gods uh, a great uh, almighty and terrible it sounds uh, like an almost like a negative thing doesn't it to our mind today but no, this is who he is. This is who our God is. Powerful. Mighty. Terrible. A little bit scary, really, is the idea there. That we should fear our, our God. Uh, because he has power of life and death over us. But he's also the God of love. He's also the God of, of compassion and mercy. He's also the God who looks after the widows and the fatherless. He's also the God who looks after the stranger. And this is a, a, a great comfort to us. That yes, he's this powerful God who can do anything. And he comes through and he takes the weak. And he takes the underdog. He takes the most unlikely character and he uses them for his glory. Uh, the, the Bible is full of that on the way home in the car we were talking a little bit about David as well and the same thought there that whereas Saul was this tall uh, virile uh, man who'd been chosen to be king by the world system, by uh, the standards of Israel by the people's request 
who had no regard for God's plan, as you said, we want a king. So someone who's tall head and shoulders above everyone else is the best choice. Someone who's tall, good looking, um, active, strong, uh, successful in battle. Fine, but then what happens is the enemy comes with somebody who's more tall, Goliath, who's more powerful, who's more threatening, who's more uh, successful in battle. And when we play by the rules of the world, then we can expect to lose by the rules of the world. But then the little shepherd boy, the insignificant one who wasn't even meant to be there, who's just delivering the cheese, David is raised up. Uh, but he says, well, I come to you, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Let's not make it about me. Let's not make it about my weakness and my insufficiency and my uh, inability to fulfill the needs. But let's make it about God. Let's make it about an all-powerful God, the God of gods, the, the mighty one the Almighty, uh, the, the Terrible One, the One who's scary, the One who, who inspires awe and fear. When uh, uh, Elijah saw the fire come down from heaven, even though the, the wood had been soaked with barrels of water to make it completely impossible to set a light, what was the result of the people shouted out the Lord, He is God. Why? Because of, there's the wolf, there's, there's an impossible God, a God of the impossible there, who does something that is so miraculous and so out of the ordinary that everyone takes note of it. The whole nation of Israel turned back to God at the time. But it's interesting because we, we looked at these verses today about the Lord, the God of gods, Lord of lords. It doesn't say it here, but also in the book of Revelation, it tells us also that he's king of kings. Now, interestingly, most Christians have taken that part, which is rarer. And often we talk about all these, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, God of gods. But actually... It, we read God of Gods and Lord of Lords more than we read King of Kings in the Bible. Uh, it's interesting which one resounds with us. Well, we think of King of Kings because, oh, it's a person, it's someone we can relate to, it's a human being. But God of Gods, Lord of Lords, that's actually, wow, that's God himself. That's something that man's mind can't cope with, so we, we go with the one that we can cope with. But that only goes to, sh to make him all the more uh, mighty, all the more terrible. Uh, and I like this as well because the bit we didn't actually focus on this morning. It says, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Wow, think about that. Regardeth not persons. Uh, it tells us, doesn't it, that our God is no respecter of persons. And actually, this is a, a good principle that our God does not say, um, well, because this person is important, I will deal with them differently. Because this person is a king or a ruler, they will get special treatment from me. Because this person is uh, uh, upheld by the world because they're very rich, or very talented I will I will acknowledge them because they're famous in this world I will I will deal with them differently no this is how man operates but not with God no respecter of persons uh, it's interesting when we were on outreach this afternoon uh, I spoke to this young man called Douglas he was amazingly open um, he told us a little bit about his life but um, he said that he had had uh, people in his life who had pointed him to, to, to God and he had a belief I don't know whether he was quite at that point yet um, where 
he would say Christ was his saviour but he certainly had uh, agreed with a lot of the things we said but we had a very sweet time with him but it's interesting at one point uh, it came out that I was the pastor of the church and he sort of said oh why didn't you tell me that you were the pastor of the church you know oh you should have said that you know you know I said Look, you know what it doesn't matter who I am it's not like it's not about people it's not about positions it's not about who we are it's not it's you know God can use anyone and uh, it's like this whole thing about oh you should have told me you were but no it's better that you you don't know that really in a way because you know if I'm just uh, you know someone telling you about the gospel telling you about Jesus Christ what does it matter whether you know there's any anything else involved you know and there's this our God is no respect for persons he's not interested in the titles of men he's not interested in dignitaries the power of uh, of who people are he's not interested in celebrity he's not interested in political power all of these things you know I was thinking about that when we saw the uh, uh, the environmental cop 26 um, uh, conference in Glasgow how the world is obsessed with celebrity isn't it you know who is who is involved in these big debates uh, about the world you know it's like, oh political leaders yes uh, the leaders of political countries around the world fair enough okay but then Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, David Attenborough TV people you know uh, celebrities oh you know we get we have we'll get people involved to who the world uh, looks up to in respects point is god he's not like that he's no respecter of persons doesn't matter how rich how famous people are uh, and, yeah, <laughs> years ago i remember being on the streets of vienna with a church before i met this ministry actually we were doing some outreach and um, we gave out a tract to this lady who was very smartly dressed and it turned out that she was quite a famous TV actress I hadn't heard of her I'm afraid because you know I hadn't lived in Austria long enough you know you don't you know in the same way that if you haven't lived in this country you might not know all of the people of every TV show um, but actually this uh, friend of mine uh, who is Austrian had a conversation with her about the gospel and it came away and he said he said you know what he said it's sad this woman was so proud because she was sort of, yes but you don't you know who I am no oh, you know like I'm I'm this uh, famous actress and he said and he, as we were walking away privately he said to me yeah but she still has to repent you know she still has you know she still will face God it's like you know who does she think she is it's like there's, there's celebrity status in heaven and it's true you know we don't we tend to forget that that actually yeah it's uh, it doesn't matter who we are down here uh, it doesn't matter who we are up there because actually as we've said many times before in Ephesians 2 we are seated in heavenly places those of us who believe it as Christ as Saviour tells us we are seated in heavenly places we have a portion at the table with the Lord already and so it depends who we are up there not who we are down here that's the important issue really for anyone because he's no uh, respecter of persons and also it, like it, it's, I like that it says that he doesn't take reward and what does that mean well you know we can't bribe God Lord if you do this thing for me I will give you this have we ever been tempted to pray that way maybe we've prayed that way maybe we know people have prayed that way uh, you know Lord give me the perfect wife and I will serve you all my days Lord give me this job give me this amount of money and I will give you something in return Lord I will donate this amount to the church fund 
to missionaries, to charity. If you will do this one thing for me and answer my prayer so that I will get my will. No, it's like God is not a God who takes reward. He's not a bribable God. You know, Lord, uh, come on, Lord, you're going to forgive me soon. There'll be something in it for you if you do. Uh, you know what? There'll be something good. I'll make sure. God, you forgive me this sin. I'll make sure you're all right. No, it's not. It's not like that, is it? God is a God of justice and truth, and He He is the way. He is. He has standards, and He doesn't bend on them. He doesn't uh, buy. We we can't bargain with. Well, Lord, I don't think it's really in this day and age appropriate for you to class certain certain things as sin anymore. Can't we negotiate on these things? No. God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't take reward. He's not there to be changed and swayed and persuaded. The only one who has the ear of God the Father is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way we escape is if we give our heart to Him. And we say that, Lord, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sin. And that full payment was made for my sin by him. I can't do anything towards it. I can't do anything to change my past. But I believe that Christ died for me. And then the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, will intercede for us. In other words, we, we trust Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ will say, this person I died for. This person I laid down my life for them. They accepted me as their saviour. And the payment was made in full for them. And that is the one that the Lord will listen to. God the Father listens to his son. That's the only influence that we can wield. Is to uh, be in close touch with God the Son. Wow. And then, you know, before we close tonight, there's a few other things that I think it, it's good for us to say on these verses. Lord of Lords, God of Gods, Lord of Lords, great, a great God, mighty and terrible, which regarded not persons nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. Cleaving to the Lord, clinging to the Lord. Funnily enough, uh, I think Pastor Shallow was uh, mentioning that in uh, the message in Baltimore today, um, in their morning service that was uh, afternoon. Uh, we saw a little bit of it there. So, uh, you know, it's a similar theme to, to cling to God, to stay with Him. But also, this part, the widow, the fatherless, a stranger. I remember years ago when I was a student, a friend of mine, again from not from this ministry but from a uh, student ministry, um, uh, went through, took a Bible and highlighted in yellow all of the verses that talked about reaching out. I mean, he was talking about world missions, in other words, leech, reaching the lost reaching strangers but also particularly this subject of the widows the orphans the fatherless the stranger uh, the, the those that are, the, are without subject um, those who were slaves those that were in bondage those are, and it's amazing how much of that bible was highlighted in yellow 
it was like he you know, remember him holding it and saying, this, look, I'm in through and I, I look everywhere. Back in the days before we had all of these nice uh, search tools where you can do it automatically on the internet now. Uh, he'd done it with a highlighter pen, but uh, it's like, wow, yeah. But it's a constant theme that kept coming up. That the widow, the orphan, uh, the stranger, uh, that we look after them, uh, that we care for them, we care for those that this society doesn't value, and we care for those uh, that maybe don't have someone else to uh, to um, supply for them. And uh, this is a this is a thing uh, for us as believers. Because I think the other thing is, you know, very often as Christians, and particularly as evangelical Christians, there's a tendency whereby uh, people look at us and think, oh, because you have traditional moral values, you know, on, on, on sin, uh, on the sanctity of life, on the, on the family, on, on marriage, on all of these traditional values, from the Bible uh, and, and uh, on freedom and, and these things or because of that you're right wing you're right of centre politically you know you have these traditional values so that you're right wing but then the side of the coin is that people sort of say oh because you're right wing you don't care about foreigners you hate the foreigners and you look down on you're a nationalist and you look at no this is absolutely not true for the believer uh, one we look at everyone as created in God's image there's no preferential treatment and uh, and the and suddenly people see our, 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 our views on, on on social justice and on uh, um, on care and on compassion suddenly people think hang on a minute you're very left wing you know, people are always confused by Christians which is great that's the way it should be uh, but this is the thing the widow the strange you know we have these crises with um, refugees coming across the channel and uh, with people fleeing from conflict people uh, and I know that everyone sort of says, oh, well, you let all these foreigners in, they won't have Christian values and they'll dilute our, our system. And, and then, uh, But the point is, no, we, we welcome people in. We show them compassion. We show them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what will turn them? What will make a difference? Stricter rules sending people back to a place that they've escaped from or actually the love of the Lord Jesus Christ oh but they'll bring over their other faiths their, whatever their faith is Christ died for them whatever their belief system is it doesn't alter the fact that actually they, they can be accepted in the beloved as much as anyone else we're not here to sort of say, well, you know, it's like uh, this is Christian England and we're all uh, true subjects of Her Majesty the Queen, who is the head of the Church of England, and therefore we are. No, you know, we, it's beyond that. It's the life of Christ. And there's a double edged sword to that, you know, the fact that He's no respecter of persons. Yes, He's not going to respect the proud the arrogant, those that think that they're something, but he's also not going to dispel the weak, the feeble and those that need compassion he's going to lift up those people he's going to show his heart towards them uh, and we as God's people we, we also have that compassion that love towards them and uh, you know for, the, for those that need our uh, help. I know we, we, as we said this morning, there's this idea, well, well, there's a benefit system today and the world takes care of these people so we don't have to. No, that's not the point, is it? 
at the same time we don't champion these people and say well you know the church should do all of this and 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 and, and ignore other people no there has to be a right balance we treat everyone as an individual we treat everyone as they are in the kingdom of God everyone has the same opportunity not everyone is born equal not everyone has the same talents the same opportunities the same uh, situations uh, we don't all look the same we don't all behave the same we don't all think the same uh, there, is, there can be great inequalities in our abilities you know you look at the Olympic Games we're not all Olympic athletes you look at um, Hollywood we're not all as glamorous as each other uh, you look at uh, um, the city of London we're not all as rich as each other there are differences there are, there are, there are great inequalities this idea that everyone is equal it's like well we have to get that right but the opportunity for people to trust God the opportunity for people to be forgiven to live in harmony with the living God then suddenly grace means that everyone has equality equality of forgiveness some people need to be forgiven a lot other people maybe not so much remember uh, uh, Jesus said that in Luke 7 to, to Simon the Pharisee when the sinful woman was at his feet you know, which debtor do you think loved him the most the one who he forgave 50 uh, talents or the one who uh, 500 it's sort of, uh, obviously the one who he forgave more we don't all have the same sin we don't all have the same degree of sin we don't all have the same relationship with the Lord but we have the same amount of grace the same quality of grace the same access to the Father and the same Saviour the same forgiveness the same hope the same love the same victory we have the God of Gods the Lord of Lords a mighty and a terrible he's there for us and also there's that, that thing where you know we were strangers in Egypt and you say well I've never been to Egypt I don't know what that's like he's talking to the children of Israel but there's an, er there's an element whereby spiritually we've all been in Egypt we've all been in sin we've all been in our old life we all start out that way we've all been forgiven something we've all had a transformation by the Lord Jesus Christ therefore we all know what it's like we all know what's needed and we have that, that life and that compassion for people we have forgiveness for people uh, we have love for people in the name of our Lord let's pray <clears throat> Heavenly Father we just thank you tonight for your love for your mercy for your great compassion Lord for the fact that you look after those that are needy those that are uh, without help of their own thank you Lord that you are a God who doesn't respect people who doesn't look on this world's evaluation but actually you're the God of justice of life the God of truth the God of mercy the God of all grace Lord we thank you Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ and we thank you for the equality that we find the true equality that we find which is in the Saviour that each one has the same opportunity to be forgiven each one has the same amount of compassion the same amount of grace thank you Lord thank you Lord that your grace deals with my sin it deals with my neighbor's sin it deals with my enemy's sin whoever people are whatever their background whatever their issues whatever their situation Lord you forgive them you accept them 
And Lord, you call us to love each other. You call us to forgive each other. You call us to honour each other. And you call us also to love you, fear you, serve you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, now. We pray, if there's anyone out there who's, who's never understood that the Lord Jesus Christ can be their personal, individual saviour, hey, yes, Jesus died for the sins of the whole earth, and I'm probably included in that. But no, does it mean something to us? Does it mean something to you? Are your sins forgiven? Is it personal? Is it real? Is it practical? Lord, we pray that this would be the time when people say, Lord, I know that I need a saviour. I know that I'm not perfect. I'm prepared to admit that. And I know that there's nothing that this world can offer me and there's nothing I can do myself to, to change that. But I trust that what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary was a fair and just and honest payment for my sin. Yes, maybe for the sins of many other people as well, but it's, it's me, the only heart I have control over is my own. And I recognize you, Lord, that you need to be my saviour, as I need forgiveness. I need your truth, I need your life. Fill me with your spirit, come into my heart. Transform me by the power of your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, another week begins. Uh, with this Sunday, we're at the end of the first day of a new week. Uh, God bless you. Uh, hopefully we will see each of you soon. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, make yourself known. Uh, but uh, thank you for being with us. God bless you and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye for now.